Hey there, what is up guys? My name is Caleb. Welcome back to my channel. After being away for almost half a year now, I am finally ready to come back and start making some more videos for you guys. Uh, ironically, I actually ended up buying quite a bit of stuff right towards the end of last year. Uh, and then I never ended up making any videos about it. And uh, I ended up just getting really busy in my personal life. But because of that, I'm going to try to make videos on a lot of the stuff that I got for you guys last year, as well as hopefully make some more thoughtful videos like I had started doing towards this time last year. So far this year, I've uh, been really purposeful about not buying any new clothes or any new uh, clothing items in general. And so because of that, I don't have any new purchases from this calendar year, but I do still have things left over from last year that I had purchased that I'll be able to show you guys going forward. And because of those previous purchases, I do have things to show you. Like today, we're gonna to be talking about the Whites Urban Drifter 2.0 from Rose Anvil and of course the iconic Whites Boot Company. So uh, I was super excited to be able to get my hands on these. I would previously done a video on my Mr. Freedom Road Champs and during that video, I'm not sure whether or not I went into the fact that they were a bit small on me. As I continued to wear them, I did notice that the very small toe, uh, toe box continued to squeeze my feet. I kind of have like wide duck-shaped feet like I've mentioned before. And so because of that, they were just extremely uncomfortable. And it got to the point to where uh, I had to stop wearing them and it took multiple weeks actually for pain that I had in my big toe from getting pressed in to actually reside. And so because of that, once I saw that these boots were getting released, and obviously I knew that I would be able to do a more custom or kind of actually pick my a perfect size through whites, and I really, really liked the original Drifters, I decided that I wanted to get these instead and get a boot that was going to fit my foot better. And so because of that, I ended up selling my Mr. Freedom Road Champs, and I used that money to purchase these instead. And so uh, these are obviously a collaboration with the really popular boot company, Whites, and the video slash leather goods maker, Rose Anvil. And so these are a 10 inch tall. They're basically a combination of the Smoke Jumper and the Whites Packer. They share the same dogger or angular heel that the Packer has, but they're using what I believe is called the 4811 last. And so you can see here that it's a relatively square almost like a square toe cowboy shape in the toe. And so when I had seen Rose Anvil originally make the video about his first pair of boots that he did in this collaboration, I thought that these might be a great option for me because of how wide my foot is. Um, and so once I actually went into the size chart and everything, I was quickly a bit dismayed because they only had a D and an E width written in the size chart. And my foot in my length size of a 10 and a half was I think close to half an inch wider than the what they had listed for the appropriate size. And so because of that, I emailed them a couple times, ended up figuring out that I'm actually a 10 and a half triple E or a 10 and a half F. And so basically what that means is just my foot is very, very wide for, uh, within this specific last. And that is even in addition to the fact that like I'd already said, this is a relatively square toed last but i think what that really just means is that even though the toe might be kind of squared versus being angular that the overall last that they build it on is still relatively narrow if you get what i'm saying um and so overall i uh, these have pretty much become my favorite boots since i purchased them i wore them the entire winter uh, i pretty much completely stopped wearing my john lofgren eastman tanker boots now that i have these just because these are a lot wider and give my toes a lot more room. This is kind of like a trend in shoes that I've been talking about recently on my channel, or I guess in the last year, is that I'm just becoming less and less tolerant of toe or of boots that have a small toe box. Um, it really is becoming more and more important to me to kind of prioritize my foot health and the idea of like squeezing my feet into shoes that are gonna bend and point my toes and kind of give me like a bunion-y foot shape is definitely not something I'm interested in. And these still definitely put a little bit of pressure, like they're not gonna give you that full flat-footed toe, uh, toe splay, but these are significantly better to the point to where I can move my toes out side to side in comparison to uh, previous boots that I owned, like those Eastmans, for example. So for this review, I wanna go more into my general impressions and kind of my thoughts on wearing them. Um, I will take you through the specs on them, but generally that's something you would get a better time out of just by watching the Rose Anvil video. So I'll go through that really quickly just to get it out of the way. 
These are in a black, I believe it's called Seidel Double Shot. When I first got it, they felt decently kind of greasy and oily, but overall, I'd say they're a pretty neutral kind of work boot leather. They are relatively black. They're supposed to turn T-core, but in the amount of work I've put them in so far, uh, that hasn't really happened at all. They are uh, eyelets and speed hooks all the way up with just the regular size eyelets up here. They also have a brown pull tab in the back to give it a little bit of a different color. And these are done in their hand-stitched, uh, basically hand-stitched welt, I guess you would call it, um, as opposed to the stitch down or the Goodyear welt options that they offer. And then these are done with a Vibram mini lug sole, obviously. And then I think this is the 700 heel cap, but I could be the mini lug heel cap and I could be wrong. Um, this is my first time owning a boot that has the full thick rubber sole all the ways throughout. I'm generally more of a fan of half soles. And I was previously looking into getting some type of Packer or smoke jumper style boot. And I was hoping to get kind of a leather sole or a half sole. And if I ever do end up resoling these, which is, as you can see is probably a long way off, that's probably what I will opt for instead of another one of these thicker soles. But I definitely enjoy this. And since it's the black on black, you don't really see the huge thick sole all the way through. I think it looks pretty normal personally. These come with a matching extra high Rose Anvil specialty branded uh, kilty here. You can see with the little spikes, they kind of make it look a little bit more Western, a little bit cooler in my opinion. These also come with pocket kits so you can sew on your own pocket and you can put different types of knives or little stash pockets, things like that for whatever you want. Personally, I have found these to go great with my wardrobe um, because I already previously owned those Eastman tankers, which are also a black T-Core. Um, a lot of the things that I own already go with that kind of just basic black coloration. And it's something that I'm more comfortable with. Uh, for me, black boots and black leather is kind of like an easy fallback. It's something that I just naturally go to. I find it a lot more difficult to wear like browns personally. Um, I think maybe just I find it harder with my features or something like that. I do personally really enjoy when browns are pulled off well, uh, especially in like tonal outfits, but it's just not something that I feel a lot of confidence in doing in my day to day. You can obviously see that here with these raw hide laces or with the leather laces, you can see kind of the raw coloration, which hopefully as I continue to wear these will start to show through. Although with how thick I'm assuming the pigment is on these or just how hardcore and heavy duty they are, um, it's definitely has, isn't showing in the last six months since I got these. I ordered them in, I believe, late November, and they weren't supposed to show up until the first couple months of the new year. And they actually ended up showing up before Christmas time, within less than a month, I believe. This is really amazing because a lot of these specific Northwest brands are known for having such ridiculous lead times. Um, for a long time, I really wanted a pair of West Coast, and I think at a certain point, their leads times got close to two years. They might have even broken two years, which honestly, for something kind of in that middle of the road quality doesn't really seem to be worth the wait for me um, and especially when you're not sure if it's going to fit you or anything like that and so because of that i was honestly just blown away with how fast these got shipped out and i really couldn't have asked for anything better than a one month shipping um, especially knowing how much work and how much time gets put into every single one of these pairs and i doubt that they have this size just sitting around either considering how wide my foot is and so that makes me think that if they might have had some boots stocked, it's unlikely that this was one of them uh, because of how wide my foot is. And I was still able to get it within that first month, which is really cool. I know that uh, one of my other buddies from Instagram, I'll put his Instagram right here with his pictures of his boots. He got his very quickly as well. Um, his pictures, as you can see, are from when they were a little bit newer and a little bit less broken in. You can see his toe box is less collapsed than mine is. Obviously my toe, toe box is more collapsed. Speaking of the toe box, that's one of the things that's really interesting with these boots. Uh, having a relatively tall when new, but unstructured toe box means that they will collapse over time. And one of the things that you will be able to see, hopefully I can get in close enough for you guys to see here, is that on each boot, the creasing or folding or rolling pattern is very different. And this is because my two feet are pretty different in size. Um, my left foot is probably like a quarter or even a half a size bigger and a little bit wider than my right foot. And part of that you can see is based on how my left foot here, you can see uh, kind of fills up the boot. It leads to it to roll instead. I think this is because everything on this boot 
is kind of aligned appropriately. I believe like the ball of my foot and things like that are more where they're supposed to be in this boot. Or alternatively in this right boot, I think everything is just a tad shorter. And so basically what that does is I think it causes right around here for my big toe to crease. And so what it does is it causes this big crease here, as you can see, and then this little dimple in here, which is interesting. I think this right boot probably looks a little bit worse. It's honestly not the end of the world. It doesn't really bother me too much on a day-to-day -day basis. But you can see from the top, obviously, and from the side profile that it does cause them to look different. This looks a little bit pointier at the tip. Uh, this doesn't look quite as pointy, although I do think this kind of rolled look looks a lot more uh, natural than this crease look. Uh, I think it looks a lot smoother in the rolls. Obviously, a lot of the most... Uh, popular leathers like Shell Cordovan or a lot of the most popular boots like the Clinch Engineer boots are so popular because they roll instead of creasing. It tends to be just a little bit more sightly. Although there is some light creasing I would say on these rolls as well. I do just generally think this looks a little bit better. If I could have the other one mirror that, obviously I would. I did try to set the creases a little bit with like a, like a rod or a stick or something in the beginning. And I think just overall, I don't think the issue was with setting the creases. I think the main issue with these was just the fact that my right foot is so much smaller than the left foot. Obviously you have to accommodate your larger foot. And so because of that, uh, they didn't really fill up the right boot correctly, but that's nothing wrong on the part of whites. As I've expressed in the past, I'm not really one for details or staring at stitching or anything like that. I haven't noticed anything that bothers me personally on either of these pairs. Um, the stitching is pretty clean as far as I can tell. I'm sure someone could look up close and really tell you and nitpick things um, and more power to them. It's just personally not really my, uh, my main uh, thoughts or really, really what I care about personally. I will say down here in kind of these junctions where uh, it's really famous for stuff to get really, really caught up and messy, they are definitely relatively clean. Um, just as a general testament to uh, how well these boots are made. I will say I've definitely seen some pretty sketchy Pacific Northwest boot uh, kind of issues and failures. I think it's a lot more obvious on a lot of boots when they have that normal style of stitch down, especially with the white stitches. You can kind of see where the issues are. Here with this black on black on black, um, if there were to be any issues, which like I said, I haven't even noticed personally, I think they would blend in a lot more easily. And so that would be something that would kind of eliminate a lot of the problems you might have with a more traditional kind of like a brown stitch down boot with the white stitching on top of it, where those imperfections might shine through a little bit more easily. These boots were some of the last boots that they did uh, or that whites made before they uh, did their price hike. Actually, technically, I think that Rose Anvil was saying that he got them to keep the original price on these and that the price hike had actually already happened. So I think these are some of the last full spec smoke jumpers that you could get for under $700, if I remember correctly. And so that's a pretty high price point. Um, for me, I felt like I was kind of getting my money's worth because I was trading an already expensive boot. So I didn't really feel necessarily in my brain that I was paying the full price since I was just selling one boot and using that money directly to get another one. And they pretty much ended up translating one for one in the price. And so because of that, the price wasn't necessarily something that bothered me a ton. Obviously now that I don't have another pair of boots to sell to use the money for, if I wanted to get another pair of these, it would be a bit problematic. Um, I would like to get something like this in a lighter leather, maybe with a shorter heel as well. But for now, uh, I'm definitely just going to stick with these. At a certain point with whites, you kind of have to feel like if I'm paying all this extra money, especially in comparison to a lot of the other Pacific Northwest brands for a company that might kind of have the most name or heritage to it, but technically isn't even like a family owned or a privately owned, meaning like owned by specific people uh, company, you kind of feel like you're maybe not getting your money's worth as much. I will say for me, this hand stitching style of construction that they do, I think with this kind of rollover well or whatever you would want to call it, uh, looks a lot better than just the traditional stitch down. And so that's something that personally might make me lean towards getting another pair of whites in the future versus something like a pair of Knicks. Although I do have to say that Thurman last from Knicks is definitely pretty tempting as someone with a lot of boot fitment problems. So that's something I'll have to think about and look into in the future. So another great thing about these boots is you get kind of a mixture of a work boot and a cowboy look. Um, and it depends on how much of the boot you can see. 
when your pants are down on top of them, um, they kind of, you can just see this cowboy heel and this lower toe, and they look a little bit more Western inspired. Obviously from the top, they look a little bit more square and work booty, but from the side, I think they look relatively sleek for how heavy duty of a boot this is. And if you want to cuff up or roll up your pants, you can kind of see more of the shaft. And they do look a little bit more work booty, a little bit more fire boot. And it kind of gives them a nice amount of versatility. Having this tighter shaft with the laces means that they can fit under lots of pants. And so traditionally, I've been really into wider pants. And I still am generally. I really enjoy wearing my black side wider jeans or some of my like World War II repro jeans. And these obviously fit perfectly under that. In fact, the kind of slimmer side profile actually is a nice contrast between the wider pants and the slimmer jean. But even with, uh, I've also been wearing a lot of the Wrangler cowboy cut jeans and wearing them with something like my uh, Capital Century denim in the Cisco fit, or sorry, yeah, in the Cisco fit, which is a bit of a slimmer fit. Um, these look really good with those as well. And because of the kind of slimmer shaft, they don't really fill up those slimmer leg openings. And so these still kind of create those nice smooth lines that you're looking for. These also look good with kind of a more traditional uh, Wrangler cowboy styling. So uh, I have some Wranglers that are kind of that more uh, contemporary cut, meaning that I buy them too long to allow them to stack up. And that looks good on these as well. And it also looks good with something like a cropped, uh, like a hemmed pair or a cuffed pair of a wider leg pair of jeans where you can kind of see a little bit more of the boot. And so because of that, I think it lends to these a great amount of versatility. And so overall, I just feel like these boots go with a ton of different pants and because of that, a ton of different outfits. I think they fit kind of right in the middle of that casual uh, range of formality as well to where you can pretty much wear them to anything that a normal person would need to go to. Uh, if I don't need to be wearing a suit or a tie, then I can pretty much wear these there for the most part. Um, I'll even wear them like to church sometimes. Honestly, if someone sees that you're wearing a leather shoe, you're probably beating like the formality of 80 or 90% of the people who are gonna be there anyways. Uh, it's kind of like what Jake from Almost Vintage Style says. He's like, if you're wearing a collared shirt and people always are just gonna assume that you're more dressed up anyways, or he said, he said something like that in the past. And I find that to generally be the truth. And so because of that, I honestly feel like these boots are so perfect and versatile, especially for someone in, like me who has a hard foot to fit. Um, if you have like a high volume foot or a wide foot or a tall instep or just anything that causes a lot of issues for you, um, these I feel like are a great alternative to something like a cowboy boot or an engineer boot because you get kind of that cool uh, extreme look, I guess, but you don't have to deal with trying to fit inside of a pair of pull-on boots, which for, I know for a lot of people is a really big issue. It's a really big issue for me. And uh, especially if you're not into the modern styling of kind of the goofy, extremely wide welt square toe cowboy boots that are popular right now, if I could just find a pair of square toe cowboy boots without that goofy wide welt, then uh, I think I would probably be more interested. But um, for me right now, these are honestly perfect. I've been wearing these a ton. Uh, I've started to not wear them as much because how hot it's been this summer or it's how hot it's getting. Um, I'm basically working outside all day and when I get home, very rarely, unless it's on a really cool night, do I feel like lacing up into these and continuing to sweat. Well, thank you guys for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will make sure to try to post more often. I have some more videos, like I said, that I can make about clothes that I purchased around Christmas time towards the end of last year that I didn't get the chance to make videos on. And because of that, I will have some stuff to continue to make videos on moving into the rest of this year. I am going to continue to try not to buy things for the rest of this year. Maybe successfully, maybe unsuccessfully. I pretty much haven't bought anything for like style or fashion that's not been purely for function uh, this entire year. And it's been nice to be saving money. Let me know what you guys thought about the video. Let me know what you guys think about these boots. Um, are they interesting? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Feel free to tell me why. Personally, I think they're awesome. Um, everyone I've seen who's purchased a pair seems to really, really enjoy them. But I could see how they might be a little bit controversial. All right, so I'll check you guys out on the next video. Enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time.